Hello friends, I am Dr. Prashant Sharma and you are watching Medico's Hub. This is my second lecture on interior of the base of the skull and in this lecture I am going to discuss the middle cranial fossa. Now, this is middle cranial fossa. It appears to be butterfly shape. It is more deep in comparison to the anterior cranial fossa. Now, the boundaries. This is the anterior boundary, this one is the posterior boundary and this is basically the floor. So anterior boundary is contributed by the lesser wings of sphenoid bone, the anterior clinoid process and the sulcus chiasmaticus. These form the anterior boundary. Now this is the posterior boundary which is contributed by dorsum cellae and the petrous part of temporal bone. Now we will discuss the middle cranial fossa in two headings. First one median area, another one is lateral area. So this is the median area. Median area is contributed by this region. This is basically tuberculum cellae. This depression or depressed area is known as hypophyseal fossa. This fossa lodges the pituitary gland. And this one is obviously the dorsum cell. These three are collectively known as cella tersica. Now, these are optic canals. Optic, optic canals are surrounded superiorly by the lesser wings of sphenoid, medially by the body of sphenoid. And this one is superior orbital fissure. We'll discuss it later on. This is superior orbital fissure. So this is the medial area that is optic canal, sulcus chiasmaticus, tuberculum cellae, hypophyseal fossa and the dorsum cellae. Now this is the lateral area. These structures are forming the median area. Now lateral area. Lateral area is having superior orbital fissure. Superior orbital fissure is bounded by the lesser sphenoidal wings, the lesser wings of sphenoid superiorly, greater wing of sphenoid inferiorly and the body of sphenoid medially. This is the greater wing of sphenoid. In later area, first we have discussed superior orbital fissure. Second is greater wing of sphenoid. In this portion, this is Foramen rotundum. This is emissary sphenoidal foramen, which is also known as foramen of Vesalius. This large foramen is known as foramen ovale. And in the spinous part of sphenoid, it is foramen spinosum. In addition, there may be impressions of meningeal veins. So this is greater wing of sphenoid. Now, this is foramen lacerum.
foramen lacerum is basically posterior medial to the foramen ovale. This is foramen ovale. This is posterior medial to the foramen ovale. It is a large foramen. Then this portion. This is basically petrous part of temporal bone, and it is having. Trigeminal groove. Here we can observe trigeminal groove. Just posterior lateral to trigeminal groove, we can observe this structure. This is hiatus and groove for superior patrosal nerve. And posterior lateral to the hiatus and groove for superior patrosal nerve. There is another hiatus and groove, and that is for inferior patrosal nerve. Lateral to posterior lateral, more posterior lateral to here. Somewhere here, there is arcuate eminence, and superior anterior to arcuate anterior uh, arcuate eminence, there is tegment tympani. Tegment tympani is a bony plate which forms the roof of middle ear. So superior orbital fissure, greater wing of sphenoid, patrosal part of temporal bone, foramen lacerum, and the squamous part of temporal bone. These form the lateral area. So this is the middle area, median area, and this is the lateral area of the middle cranial fossa. So hit the like button, share, and subscribe our channel to get the latest updates and notifications.